Hi. <clears throat> Today we'd like to take a little time and talk to you about the legacy system utility freeware that we have available at Lionel for your use. The LSU is available from the internet. It's a free download. It's effectively freeware from Lionel that allows you to take full advantage of your legacy system. The LSU allows you to manipulate the individual data for each locomotive that you have stored in your base. It allows you to update and back, or rather back up and update your base software, as well as the data you have stored on your base. So if you've taken your legacy system and you've already entered all of your switches, all of your trains, your locomotives, your accessories, etc., into your cab and use those orange memory modules to do it, while you have the interface for you has been the cab or the legacy remote or cab 2 remote, the data is actually stored inside the base. So with the LSU, you're able to back up that data from your hard drive on your base, just like you would on a computer if you were to back it up to a, an external storage drive or uh, even a cloud solution. So basically you want to cover what's necessary and then how you do it. And then we're going to cover how you can install new software updates onto your cab and your base. The first item that you're going to need is the Legacy Writable Utility Module. This is available under product number 6-37125. The color on the module is black, which means it's writable. This is effectively the same thing as a USB jump drive. You can write data to it, consume the data anywhere you want on your cabs or your bases, and then should you need to, to put new information on it, you can just write right over top of what was there. It will erase what was there and write over top of it. So you really only need one black writable utility module for your railroad. The next thing you're going to need, obviously, is your uh, number 990 legacy cabin base. You'll need the Y cable that comes with your legacy cabin base. Um, you're also going to need a computer. Now, on your computer, there's two types of, uh, there's two types of uh, drives out there. Or, or I should say ports. You've got uh, some com older computers have an RS-232 uh, port on the computer that will allow you to just use this legacy command base cable plug directly into your computer. This way your computer can talk to your base. However, there's other people out there that have only a USB drive. And the universal serial bus drive requires a different cable. It's something that you're going to have to go out and purchase. The LSU manual recommends a specific USB compatible driver or cable converter that goes from the USB port to the RS-232 connection. It's, uh, it's right in the beginning of the LSU manual. Uh, we're going to show you here in a bit how you can access that manual online as well as the software utility itself. Basically what's going to happen so that you understand is you're going to have your, your computer. Your computer is going to connect to your legacy system. We'll call this the number 990 base. And you're going to transmit data this way. It's going to connect to either that RS-232 port or the USB port on your computer. Then connect to your legacy base. This will allow you to manipulate the data on the base from the computer. Now, the writable utility module is used for really three functions. One, it's used to program the latest uh, software upgrades to, for, that's available for the base and the cab. And it also can be used to make what's called a multi-engine module. And what a multi-engine module is, is, is much like the orange module, which contains data for one locomotive, a multi-engine module has the ability to take all 99 locomotives that you may have stored in your base and load all the data onto this one single black module. It is important to note that you need at least legacy version 1.5 software to access all of the engine data on a black writable module should you make a, a multi-engine module for your use. Some of the advantages of that multi-engine module are this. Let's assume that you belong to a club, 
or you have some friends that have legacy on their railroad. You can take all of your engine data on your black module, select the engines of yours that you'd like to take and run on somebody else's layout, go to the layout, bring in your cab, you fire up your legacy remote, dial in the channel that that person's uh, base is set to, now your cab reflects all the data in their base. You then take your locomotive, place it on the track, program an engine number that perhaps doesn't conflict with that other person's uh, engines on their railroad. So you program at engine 14. You then go into your, uh, your cab with your black module loaded, dial up the information for that specific engine based on the road number or the six dash number, load the data, it extrapolates that data that it needs from the black module, saves it into that person's base, and boom, you're ready to run your legacy engine with all of the data from your orange module uh, for, like I said, 99 locomotives all off of one module. It is required, though, that you have at least version 1.5 in your cab to make this happen. Let's take a few minutes here, and we'll go through how to exactly wire the cab and the base together, or I'm sorry, the base and the, and the computer together, and we'll also talk about where you access the LSU software, the manual, etc. Now the requirement is, is that your computer must be able to connect to the internet. So once you have your internet connection established, you want to open up your web browser, and you want to go to Lionel.com. We have here on the screen the home page for Lionel.com. Once you get here, you're going to scroll down to the bottom of the home page. And down at the bottom, you'll see where it says Legacy 1.5 now available. If you click on the link that says Learn More, it'll take you to the Legacy specific page. Once we get to the Legacy specific page and it loads, it'll tell you right here New Legacy System Utility. You want to click on Learn More. This is going to load up a page that gives you access to the Legacy System Utility Manual as well as the ability to download the Legacy System Utility. So you want to click on Download the Legacy System Utility. This will take you to a URL that has the download on it. Once the page loads, click on Legacy System Utility Software Update. We recommend that you press the Save button and save this file to your hard drive. I'm going to go ahead and save it to the laptop or to the desktop. Take just a few minutes to download. Once the download is complete, you simply go to your desktop or the file where you save the LSU software. You open it up. It is a zip file. You must unzip the file before you can access the setup or the executable file to set up LSU on your computer. If you don't currently have the ability to open a zip file, we recommend that you do a search on Google for a freeware that's available from a company called WinZip. Download the free trial version of WinZip and this will allow you to unzip the file and access the executable file for the legacy system utility. Once you've downloaded the LSU and you've installed it on your computer, you can go ahead and open the program. We have the icon right here on our, our desktop. This is the screen you'll see when the system opens. Go ahead and center that for us. So the legacy system utility master screen or main screen appears such as this. Now we need to connect our computer to our legacy base. To do that we're going to use the Y cable that came with our 990 set. The way that this is done is we're going to take the Y cable with the end marked legacy base and connect it to the legacy base itself. 
This connects on that computer port right on the business end of the legacy base. We're then going to take the end of the cable that's labeled serial com and we're going to connect it to our RS-232 port on our computer. Now, if you have a USB drive on your computer, you're going to need to uh, purchase the uh, RS-232 to USB cable converter, which is, a, which is available under uh, product number USA-19HS. And that is a high-speed USB serial adapter from a company called Trip Lite. T-R-I-P-P-L-I-T-E. Once you've connected the base to the computer, you then need to establish the communication port between LSU and the base. To do this, simply go up here to the top to configure and go down to COM port, C-O-M-P-O-R-T. Once you click on COM port, if you happen to know the port that you'll be using for this communication, you can select it. If you're not certain, we recommend that you start with the lowest numbered COM port first. So in this instance, it will be COM port 1. We can then click the button OK. And down here, in the lower right hand corner, it shows progress. Then we have status, which right now says idle. And we have base, which says connected. So by choosing COM port 1, we have successfully connected the LSU software in the computer to the legacy base. Now that we have the computer connected to the base, we can go ahead and do a little navigation within the LSU software. So if we go to the tab that says Edit Engine Data, it tells me right now that it's loading the engine data from my base. So this may take a few minutes. The status is tracked down here on the progress screen. What the computer has actually done is it has read all of the data, all the engine specific data from my base into the computer. It will do the same for yours. You now have up here in the engine menu screen, or I'm sorry, the engine number screen, you have a number, which currently it's two. That tells me that engine number two is a Northern Pacific GP9. The data that's in here is all the same data that's currently inside your legacy remote when you press the info button to access the engine menu under a specific engine ID address. The great part about the LSU software is that these two areas here and here allow you to manipulate the, so the uh, soft keys on the touchpad of the legacy remote. So the file on the left here, or the orientation on the left, would be the lower two left hand icons on your legacy touchpad. Then this section here is the right side, so the lower two right hand uh, soft keys on your touchpad you can manipulate. Now once you, once you choose the option to have available on the left hand side, you'll see that all the items here are available. We can do ground lights, Mars lights, hazard lights, strobe lights, rule 17 lighting, engine marker lamps, tender marker lamps, or other. Once you select one of these, it will display the icons that will appear on your cab. So we just selected Mars light. So there's the icon for Mars light on and Mars light off. If we go to the right side, we can choose ground lights. And the icons change to ground lights on, ground lights off. Once we're happy with the selection that we've made, we simply click on the Save Changes to Base button. The progress here will tell us, boom, it's done. The base is updated, and if I turn on my legacy remote and address Engine 2, now in the lower left-hand corner, I'll have the icons for the Mars light, and in the lower right-hand corner, I'll have the icons for the ground lights on and off. We encourage you to go ahead and play around with this functionality. It is important to note that if you have a steam locomotive and you choose the option for ground lights on and off, 
that your locomotive is most likely not going to grow a feature that it did not have before LSU was available. So the likelihood of your steam engine magically generating ground lights to turn on and off is nil. The other great thing that LSU is perfect for is for updating the software on your base. Since the release of the Legacy 1.4 software and all future software updates, those software updates will be available only through internet downloads and require you to use the black module to load them on your cab and your base. So to create a base module or a cab module, you click on the tab for maintenance, which is the screen that appears when you initially open the system. You can click on make cab module and make base module, which we'll cover shortly in detail pertaining specifically to legacy version 1.5 software. Before we do that, I do want to note that you can also back up your database. So in this instance, I can click on the button that says backup database. It tells me that it's reading the base now. This takes a few seconds because it's, sa it's saving all of the data that you've loaded onto the base itself. So once this loads completely out of the base and into the computer, it will ask you to save it as a file name. You then can create a separate folder for legacy base backups, save the file using perhaps your name and the date so that if ever in the future your database needs to be cleared or erased, you can back up all of that saved data that you now have on your computer hard drive. And as you can see, this takes a few minutes to process. There's a lot of data in there that it's extrapolating. Now that the file uh, browser window pops up, we can simply change the, the name and the date of the software backup or the data backup and then go ahead and save it to our hard drive. Click the save button, it saves it, it says database successfully saved. The bottom uh, hot key or button down here is restore database and this is the button that you would use to load that data that we just saved to the hard drive back onto the base. So you click on the restore database button, you select the file, and we would select our test layout backup with today's date on it, and we would hit open. When we hit open, it will immediately take the data that we saved in the computer and load it back into our legacy base. Let's take a few moments and talk about how to access the various legacy software updates, get them on your computer, get them unzipped, and how to make a cab module, load it into your cab, and then make a base module and load it into your base. The current legacy version 1.5 software can be found by accessing the linel.com homepage. So open your internet browser, connect to the internet, go to linel.com. Once you land on the home page, scroll down to the bottom, and in the lower right hand corner we have Legacy 1.5 now available. If you click on the link at the very bottom that says Get Free 1.5 Upgrade, go ahead and click on that link and it will take you to the download page for the 1.5 software. Once we get here, We simply click on this link that says download Legacy V1.5. Click on that button and then we click save. We have to then select where we want to save it to and in this case we're going to save it to our desktop. So we hit save. It runs through the download process. Once that's completed the file window will close. Once we've downloaded the zip file for Legacy version 1.5 software we have to unzip it. Once you unzip the file, you will then need to extract the files from the unzipped file into a separate folder. You want to make sure that you create this folder new or place those files on the desktop. So once they're extracted from the unzipped folder, the LSU software can then see it and therefore access it. Before we do that though, we're going to need to take our black module and load it into the module port on our base itself. 
So remove the dust cover, and it's a little tricky because this gets in the way. Take your black module and load it into your base. Once the black module is loaded, you can bring LSU back online. Click on Make Base Module. This will open up the file window. You will then select BAS2-V151 Base2. Double click on that file and the system is already taking that data and programming it to the black module right now. When you're doing a software upgrade on your cab and your base using the writable utility module, you want to make sure that you upgrade your base first and then upgrade your cab. Otherwise, doing it in reverse, when your cab powers on, it will not find and connect with your base and it will appear as though you have a problem, which you don't. It's just going to send up a red flag in your head to say, oh, I have a problem, when in reality there's no problem at all, you just did it in reverse. So right now we're making the base module for version 1.5 and we're loading this data onto the black module. So the computer connected to the base, the LSU is programming the a base software to the black module right now. As soon as this loads, we can go through programming the base with the new software. Very, very simple process, which we'll show you momentarily. And the progress status bar down here is moving along, so we don't have any communication errors. It tells us module successfully written. So we press the OK button. At this point, we want to disconnect the serial port from the computer because what we're going to do is a system upgrade on the software that actually operates the base and the remote system. So we unplug our Y cable. We can leave the module plugged in. We simply take the power plug out of our base to turn it off. On the bottom, you want to hold on to the channel select button, keep that pressed in, and then apply power. And what's happening is these lights are flashing very quickly. All the lights here on the front are illuminated. And the base is going through the 1.5 upgrade process right now. Once the lights start, stop flashing and the blue legacy lights come on, that tells you that the module is successfully loaded. So at this point, we can reconnect our serial com port. We can go over to LSU and we can click on make cab module. We select the cab2 v151.cab2 file and right now on the progress bar the computer is talking to the base and programming the 1.5 software update to the black writable module. This will take just a few minutes to complete and then we can update our cab. Once the data has completely loaded onto the module, a window will pop up and tell you module successfully written. Click the OK button. At this point you're going to need to take the black module out of the base. Remove the dust cover on your legacy remote. Insert the writable module with the silver circle L facing you. Hold down the set button and while you're depressing the set button, press the power button. The LED on the remote will begin to flicker violently while the cab extrapolates that new upward, uh, update software off the black module under the cab. Once it's completed its process, the red light will turn off and the cab will turn on. There's our cab turning on and if we press the red power button one time we can see that it says cab V 1.51 base V 1.51 we have just successfully uploaded software version 1.5 to both the base and the cab and it's just that simple
Now that that's done, if you choose, you can make a multi-engine module using the writable utility module. Same process, you insert it into the module port on the back of the base. And as you go through the edit engine data, there's a button down here that says uh, add to multi-engine module. Of course, it's going to extrapolate that data each time you do it because between having the computer connected to the base and you operating your trains, you may have loaded engines, so it wants to make sure it grabs all of it at the same, at, at, at the same time. All you have to do is click this, uh, this button down here that says include in multi-engine module, go to the next engine, the next engine, etc. The zip file that you download with the LSU software has a PDF instruction manual. It's a 26 page manual that walks you through the installation of LSU and how to take advantage of all of its features. It is important that you read that manual and note that there is no technical support available because this is freeware. However, if you determine you do need technical support, we encourage that you visit the O-Gage Railroading online model railroad community, better known as the OGR Forum, under the TMCC Legacy Forum, locked at the top of that forum itself for TMCC and Legacy, is an LSU assistance thread that is monitored by a Lionel employee where you can gain any technical support that you might need. In the future, if you ever need to access an earlier version of software, for instance, you want to downgrade your legacy system, or in the future, also upgrade your legacy system, say perhaps when 1.6 or 1.7 is released, if you ever want to go back to version 1.5, you can always find the software upgrades uh, located on the Lionel website. Go to Lionel.com, click on products, scroll down to find a product, and click on find a product. Once that page loads, all you have to do is enter the product number for the legacy system, which is 6 dash 14295 and hit enter. That'll load up the legacy 990 set. You click on the 990 set, it'll take you to the product finder page. And on the lower left hand side of the screen, there's a tab for software update. You simply click on software update and it'll bring up the legacy 1.4 and the legacy 1.5 software updates. As updates become available in the future, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, and so on, will be available from this link here exclusively, as well as those links shown where you can access from the homepage.